That's a good one. Welcome back to Rusky World Shed, guys. Uh, a channel where apparently I make things rather than drive them. Um, thanks to coronavirus, we can't actually play go anywhere. Anyways, today I will be learning a new skill, engraving. I have a new order for one of my shift knobs. Um, they are, by the way, for pure motorsport, in my opinion, the best shifter you can get for, for a Clio, for reasonable money. Um, so I make those shift knobs. They're obviously all custom designed, uh, machined aluminium. I can make them in brass or derlin or whatever. This one, in particular, is for Charlie 182 RBT, a very famous influencer uh, on Instagram and uh, on forums and stuff. He has by far the cleanest RB182 Clio in the country, in the world. I mean, he's been in Fast Car magazine, he's been in uh, other magazines. It's just, it, it's, you need to check it out. The link to his Instagram is in the description. Anyways, I'm making the shift knob for him and um, to make it that little bit extra custom I want to, well, we kind of agreed that we want to engrave something onto the shift knob So, in order to do that, I need to learn a new skill, engraving Something like this looks absolutely amazing It's unbelievable the, 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 the quality and the detail you can achieve but I think I can do it on the chip. After browsing online for different uh, techniques and ideas on how to make it, I found a few different tutorials on how to make a homemade engraver. So, what do you will need? A compressor. Some people use uh, tire pumps and they modify them and stuff like that. I have this old airbrush compressor. Essentially they're the same thing. So we're going to modify this. This is going to be our air supply. Then we have a few little parts to make our engraver itself. Some chisel set and everything. And then we have some metal for the handle, for the, for the pin. Put a little spring in it and hopefully I can engrave something. So let's get started. Okay so first thing first we need to make the shift knob itself. So I use aluminum blank and then we bore the inside to specific diameters and length. This is probably the most difficult and time consuming part. Now we can knurl it and now we can make a little radius and then we make a sh out a shape, a little bit thin here, a little taper here and voila. That's our base as a shifter knob. Obviously, I'm going to trim it to make it shorter. I make them 80 mil in length. The original one is 60. So that extra 20 mil really does make a difference for you when you hold it. So now that we have a blank to engrave, we need an apparatus. Like I said before, we're going to be using one of these. I am not going to make, I'm not going to make a complete tutorial on how to make it. I'll just simply quickly show you what I've done. After all of this, we end up with a little blank like that and a little cup. So this cup will serve as a holder for, for the blade. It goes in like that. I'll probably put a set screw in here just so it can hold the blade, but it's fairly snug in there. And then this cup goes on top of here. Like that. And this is only the first part. Obviously I need to Grind this down and I'm thinking of making, because otherwise it'll be too heavy. Use some derlin, make a little radius mushroom cup and 
yeah, you basically hold it like this. Day three. Okay. It didn't really work. Why? Because this thing is definitely not suitable for this kind of work. 13 liters per minute. This is just not enough air pressure. So, Amazon, Amazon Prime. Basically, everything is assembled now, but this is a normal tire pump. Uh, procedure is still the same. You take it all apart, um, fill the holes for the piston, put a new thing, cut it off, blah, 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 blah. So effectively what it does, it oscillates air up and down. And that's it. That's all it does. This will never work as a tire pump ever again. And then we have this. Let's wait for the camera to focus. 20 minutes later. Also, I've decided not to spend money on the proper holder for the thing. So what we have is a simple Lazy Susan. That's all it needs. And I have my four jaw chuck from a lathe. It effectively works the same way. So you can engrave and you can rotate it. So yeah, what can I say? I'm very happy that it actually works. Um, it took me a little bit of time to figure it all out. Um, I did not film most of it um, because there was a lot of trial and error. We have different piston that I've used. We have lots of different springs that I've tried to use and stuff like that. Um, but it works and I think the results are pretty decent giving enough practice i think i can achieve some uh, good results um so yeah now i have to practice 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 and um we'll cut straight into the final piece So it does look like now I possess a new skill, um, engraving. I can do engraving. Um, it was an enjoyable process and I really enjoy sort of solving problems like this where people just ask me, can you do this? Hold my beer, that's my answer. Um, yeah, I guess now I have an engraver and I'll be engraving a few more things in future. Um, so yeah, if you want a, a custom shift knob with engraving or without engraving or, you know, um, I can do this and here's the result. Um, I really like this design. I think this is my favorite design so far. It's quite minimalistic, but also really has a nice feel in your hand. Um, aluminium, fairly light, fits PMS, Pure Motorsport, shifter, reusing the same bolt. So yeah, this one goes to Charlie. Um, yeah, can't wait to see the pictures on Instagram and stuff. Uh, he has quite a big following. Check him out on Instagram. His car is sick, guys. I mean, honestly, it's the best looking um, Clio 182 Mark II in the country, probably in the world. So yeah, um, give him a follow. And I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye.